Asperger. So what is Asperger syndrome? Here are seven things you need to know. All that's coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia, and I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you are new around here and you'd like to learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button by clicking the notification bell down below. And also, if you're watching over on Facebook, be sure to give this page a like and a follow to see more videos just like this one. Boom. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back everybody to another episode where we think differently daily. What's up different thinkers? My name is Dan for all those of you who don't know me. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm a guy making videos. But if you guys would like to download my free Autism 7 Life Hacks PDF book, which is completely free, there will be a link in the card above here and in the description below and also on the end slate of this video so you guys can download a lovely free little gift from me because I just love helping people and this is what I do. So thank you so much for watching. Also guys, if you want to reach out to me and ask me anything, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I read and respond to every single DM and comment. So please give me a follow. It's never wasted. I love engaging with you. Okay, so I love I love doing videos on Asperger's Syndrome, mainly because the name has changed over the years and it's now Autism Spectrum Disorder, but we're going to get into all of that um, in, a, in a short while. So I've basically written down seven things I think people should know about the, the concept of Asperger's Syndrome and, and more in-depth information about it, because um, you know, Asperger's syndrome is still a widely used term and a lot of people do still search for understanding and, and information about Asperger's and some places in the world still do diagnose people with Asperger's, but I'm going to get into all of that right now. So buckle up, get ready, hope you're relaxed and waiting for an enjoyable, awesome video. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Let's begin. Okay guys, so number one was the name change. Now, Asperger's syndrome had an official name change to the Autism Spectrum Disorder in 2013, where the DSM-5, which is the American Psychology and Neurological kind of um, handbook and guidebook for diagnosing conditions, uh, basically realized that using the term Asperger's syndrome alienated a lot of people who were on the autism spectrum outside of help and clinical kind of resources. So they ch changed the name to just include Asperger's as an autism spectrum disorder, which it is, and then they just fused it all together. So it's now just autism spectrum disorder. But people up until 2013 still had a diagnosis like I did of Asperger's syndrome, which is very, very interesting. Um, and I just find that it's just fascinating. The history is just fascinating. All right, let's roll with it. So. Number two is the history of Asperger's syndrome. Now, Asperger's is named after the main researcher in the field of this specific kind of set of behaviors, and the man was called Hans Asperger. Now, Hans Asperger started um, researching the stuff in 1947, I believe, but at the same time, a guy called Leo Kanner was actually um, uh, researching this kind of um, condition as well. So he called it Kanner's autism or early infantile, an early infantile autism, or Kanner syndrome, and you had Hans Asperger who was looking at just um, young boys with lower support needs, so they were kind of like, um, I don't like using the term, but like high functioning, uh, we'll get into that in a minute, um, and he was looking at that, uh, and, and that's how he kind of came up with that body of research, but it wasn't until um, after he died that they, uh, yeah, that they kind of came up with the, the naming of, of Asperger's syndrome, which is crazy, and he didn't die until the 80s. Okay, so number three is Asperger's versus autism. Now this is a big question, right? People always get confused. They say like, it's Asperger's syndrome, autism, or they say, hey, people with Asperger's and autism. Well, here it is. Asperger's and autism are the exact same condition. There is no difference. It's just a way of labeling the level of support needs one needs. So before the name change to autism spectrum disorder, you had things like classic autism, high functioning autism, low functioning autism, Asperger's syndrome, which were basically dotted around to say like, well, this person needs this much support needs, and this person needs like this little bit of support needs, or that person needs a lot of support needs. And it was a big mess because um, because autism is a spectrum and everyone on the autism spectrum is different they all have different catered level of needs but they all do need needs at the end of the day so they decided to um, get rid of that nomenclature and just have autism spectrum disorder which is what I was talking about in the first one but if you ever get confused is Asperger's autism or vice versa yes Asperger's and autism are one and the same thing and that's awesome. High functioning autism. A lot of people often refer to Asperger's as high functioning autism. And all that basically means is that they have a, a lower set of support needs. Like my diagnosis, I have a lower set of support needs than uh, somebody I know who is a non-verbal person who has trouble using the bathroom, right? So because autism is a spectrum and there's a bunch of different places you could be dotted on that, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be blessed with the ability to verbally communicate and express myself, you know, through learning and understanding and, and development because 
because I, I wasn't always as confident and I didn't always speak this much and I had a bit of delayed speech so it's not like it's it, you know it's still I still have struggles, still have issues, but it's a more of a um, my functioning level of support needs is a, is a lot lower. Um, my level of support needs is a lot lower. My function is higher than somebody uh, in that bracket where they may need higher support needs to help them with daily life skills. Which is um, obviously we're all here to help people, and we just need to acknowledge that. But that is where the term high functioning autism came from. But people don't really use these functioning labels because function labels implies that you are less of uh, this condition than somebody else would say, or, or vice versa. And uh, it's not really used in the community and a lot of people within this community don't use those functioning labels because they, just like anything else, it evolves and it changes over time and, um, you know, naming and stuff kind of becomes more um, politically correct and a bit more comfortable for people who like to use certain terms and, yeah, high functioning was not a good one. Okay, so number five, this one's kind of like a, a bit of a myth, that uh, Asperger's syndrome doesn't exist. Well, I got news for you. Um, Asperger's didn't stop existing just because of its name change in 2013. I um, mean, it actually still does exist and, you know, in some parts of the world and in some kind of diagnostic criteria, you can still get a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome, but typically it's autism spectrum disorder now. But um, yeah, thanks to 2013, it made a whole ruckus and everybody thought that like Asperger's syndrome stopped existing. Like, poof, you know, the conditions just disappeared, <laughs> which wasn't the case. You know, it still does exist, obviously, because it's just an autism spectrum disorder. It was a way of labeling somebody. Oh, number six, this one's my favorite one. People say um, Asperger's is not in females. Oh my goodness. This. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about before about Asperger's syndrome and autism being the same thing. People saying that Asperger's syndrome um, isn't um, um, applicable for females is completely bogus. So Asperger's syndrome is and was diagnosable in females um, as females are not exempt from autism. But this myth did come around from the fact that Hans Asperger, when he only studied boys on the spectrum because he saw these behavior traits in boys because boys um, are slightly different to girls are displaying their autism characteristics. Um, so he only studied boys. So he came to the conclusion that only boys are autistic, which is complete and utter, you know, nonsense uh, it's just that it was you know it, it was in, in its infantry like um it, it it was in its infancy, the, the research was so young, he hadn't gotten around to figuring out that the girls were on the spectrum, but of course that myth kind of kind of played out for years and years and people still talk about it to this day, which is not, but you know, it's not, it's not real, it's completely bogus, girls can have autism, yeah. Okay, and number seven, celebrity diagnosis, right? There are a bunch of celebrities who actually have a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome, and I'm gonna name just a couple right now so you guys can have a feel of it, because a lot of the time you think about, like, you know, disabilities and stuff like that, and you wonder if anybody famous actually has these disabilities, and yet, you know, a bunch of uh, pe famous people are disabled, and that's a great thing, it's an amazing thing to see, because they're like idols and stuff. So, um, there are a bunch of celebrities who have uh, an autism spectrum diagnosis, but uh, the two most interesting ones that I want to talk about today is Susan Boyle, who is a very famous singer from the UK, um, my homeland. Uh, and Susan Boyle is a singer. Um, she's a Scottish woman, I think, uh, but she has a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome. Uh, but she's a very, very successful singer, a very, very successful singer, a very famous woman. Um, and then the other guy is Dan Aykroyd, who is a um, writer, director, author, actor. He's um, he's in like Blues Brothers and like Ghostbusters, and he's in all kinds of films. The guy is an absolute legend. And if you don't know who Dan Aykroyd is. He plays um, Ray in Ghostbusters, I think. Is his name Ray in Ghostbusters? I don't know. That sounds weird. But anyway, um, those people do have a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome. And actually, here's another factoid about Dan Aykroyd. He actually has a diagnosis of Tourette's as well, and he barks in his sleep, which I also do, which I've never told anybody. So there you go. There's one you can take for free. Guys, if this video can help somebody or you think it's entertaining, please share it on Facebook and Twitter. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time, guys.